Well, hello, everybody. How are you all doing? Thanks for coming out and hanging out on this lovely Friday evening. DJ Big Red is here. Kyle's hanging out. Iron Weeds is here. Garan is here. Garen, Music to Motion made it back from the shop. <laughs> this one's for you guys. Orange pineapple today. What's your drink of uh, choice this evening? How's everyone doing? Who's excited for version 5.2? Come on, man. There's a bunch of updates that went that happened. Uh, I'm very sneakily going to do some stuff that I should be doing before we start these shows, but you can't see what's happening, so you don't know that it's happening. Eek. Don't tell anyone. It has nothing to do with keyboard shortcuts. It's got nothing to do with turning on my keyboard shortcuts. Big mouse, nothing like that. None of that. It's got nothing to do with any of that. And even still, you don't know because you can't see it. Uh, yeah, whatever. <clears throat> the new sound variations options in 5.2 is going to be really cool. Just pop the top of a Miller Lite. It's Miller time, baby. Uh, somebody's got a vanilla latte. Yes, Garen's got a, uh, Garan, Garen, uh, he's got a vanilla latte. Good morning to you, sir. Um, DJ Big Red, Mike needs work, so you can always get him to hold your speakers for you. <laughs> okay, that's, that's fine, that's a thing. Um, what is that? Has some guy named Escher designed my staircase. You never find the damn path. <laughs> what are you guys even going on about? I'm trying to find where it's all got. Oh, Kyle got some new speaker stands. About four inches tall. So you can put the books back on the bookshelf. Did you get the, the isopods? The, the four inch isopods that are supposed to like help decouple from your desk? I hear those things are good. I have some NS10s here that I could probably use a, a pair of those. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, tonight we're going to go over version 5.2. And again, sneakily off camera, because you can't see it, um, I have the release notes in front of me. Because there's a lot. There really is. Um, I got to zoom it in. Um, I mean, let's just go over some of these. Increased buffer for retrospective record. Splitter now as a plug-in. So you can see if you're using the splitter, you can see that you're actually using it and you don't have to just try and remember. That's brilliant. That's huge. Uh, mic review, it looks like a plugin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like you can expand the plugin. Yeah. Um, pan for multiple selected channels, I think is really good. It's like a temp, the, when you make a temporary group, uh, that's and then you can actually link the pans in there instead of actually having to form a group when you make the temporary group it's much better uh better it, it's a different workflow because you can just click a bunch of things slide them all to the left click a bunch of other things slide them all to the right joe went over this in the in the video and i think it's great um improved tempo detection that's awesome huge big things in the in the live section in the show page Lots of big, you know, all the variations, the sound variants. There's, there's so many new things that have come through. And that is one of the things that I really like about Studio One is any subdivision update, you get all this. Like, you only pay some for going from, like, version 3 to version 4, or version 4 to version 5. But all of the version 5.1, version 5.2, however many up they go, that's all included. I think that's huge. I think that's great because nobody wants to get charged for each, every individual subsequent update. The big ones, sure, that makes sense. But all the little ones and they just throw them in and they listen to us. Brilliant. Um, let's see. Billy Morgan's here. What's up, Billy? Uh, let's see. Music to Motion just ordered uh, uh, the Revelator mic from <laughs> Alps Media. Very nice. Uh, hopefully get some tutorials going in the future. I hope so you do too, bud. Um, I've heard some cool things about that Revelator mic. Um, Joe did a really cool video on it. Um, I don't, I don't, I haven't had a chance to get my hands on one. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, 
Let's just see in, I think. S4 gang, how to fix e-licenser. E-licenser for which things? Because uh, that could be a thing. But um, I have the, the list in front of me, the release notes. Let's go over a couple other really cool things. Um, it's stuff that I use a lot. I know that there was a lot of like virtual instruments and external MIDI instruments upgrades that happened. And I think it's awesome, especially for people who do a lot of work in that. I don't. Um, I'm more of like a, a rock and, you know, pop metal kind of engineer um, where it's real guitars or amp sims, program drums. Like, that's my thing. That's that's what I do. I do a lot of mixing, too. So I don't really send out a lot. Millie Morgan, is there a way to see difference between stock MIDI and audio loops? I mean, maybe a symbol. Uh, it's by the extension. If I remember correctly, it's by the extension um, when you're looking in the browser, but we could look into it, Billy Morgan. So, so hang tight. We'll see if we can find some stuff. I'm sure I have some loops in here somewhere and I'm pretty sure I have some, um, I know I have some MIDI information somewhere. I'll just have to find it, uh, but it should be by the, um, the designation of the file itself. Um, that should help you, uh, differentiate. Um, a couple more from the release notes. Sorry. Something was snagging my foot down here is a, a camera. Um, studio on remote. Um, and a, a lot of add-ons for Studio One Remote for your iOS and Android devices. I think Android devices. Don't don't quote me on that. Definitely um, iOS. Um, Presona Sphere. The access to the workspaces in the browser. I think they're doing. They're really pushing that collaborative feature of uh, Sphere. Presona Sphere. Um, and having it so that you can access your stuff within the browser. Really, really handy. Um, the, like the drag and drop. I mean, Presonus has pretty much been the king of drag and drop. They've been really up there in the drag and drop features within the DAW. And now that Workspace is a part of that as well, that's really big. Uh, Harley's here. Harley, you're not late. You got here exactly when you did, and that's the perfect time to get here. Oh, I may put... Oh, right. So the Music in Motion, as well as some other guys, they do... Um, they do... Uh, what are... What do you call it? The Midnight Bar. Those guys have uh, started. They've they've taken what they uh, have learned from the, the Studio One meetups and have kind of made their own. And they're calling it the Midnight Bar. And it's where people can show up and hang out and talk about stuff, Studio One music or whatever. Um, so if you're interested, Music Promotion was nice enough. He dropped a link into the chat box. So later on, you can follow that link and figure it out. <clears throat> Looking at stock slash native loops. Okay, Millie. <clears throat> okay, Billy. Okay, Billy. <laughs> we'll definitely take a look and see if we can figure some stuff out. Um, I just want to go through some more of these things real quick before we actually dive in, and we will. Um, fader port integration improvements. If you have more than one fader port, I don't. We don't all live like Gregor. <laughs> um, but you can now bank them, which is really cool. So you can you can actually get a couple of them and make your own console, which I think could be really fun and really cool. If I had that many. In, uh, upgrades for Adam SQ, the remote upgrades, MIDI bank changes, and the UI improvements, the safety and recovery options. If your Studio One crashes, you can find out why. That's really big. Full screen mode for Windows. Can't show that today because we're working on a Mac. Um, some new command lines. Arranger, stop at a whole bunch of different things um, at the end of the bar, at the end of the two bars, into four bars, into the loop. That's really cool. Uh, clip versions and uh, new clip versions. I know Music in Motion said that this is going to be really, uh, this is going to be big for him. That's really cool. Um, convert key switches to sound variations. Uh, show tracks with events. I guess that's just a like a keyboard command. Um, <laughs> send to different voices if you're doing score things. Um, being able to in show mode, especially when you're in show mode, is being able to um, change a section from loop mode, uh, or excuse me, um, to continue what they call it, or just like go on to the next phrase, or just put it instantly into a loop. So if you, like, I think Gregor said it um, in the, the video the other day, <clears throat> if you're doing a live show 
and you want to vamp over the intro of a song or, or uh, over the ending of the last song or some other kind of thing. You just want to vamp for a little while, set that section to loop. And then when you're done or when you think you're done and you want to jump into the song, you can go into continue and then play the song out from there. Very cool. Once I start working with some clients more and building shows with them like that, this will be really handy. And then they can put it on their iPad and do it right then and there. Or, you know, if it's the singer, he can do his vamp and the keyboardist in the back or whomever can be taking care of all of that. Mika's here. What's up, Mika? Um... <clears throat> Mika, I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for asking and checking in with everyone. Uh, I have to do a couple of things. We'll be back in... I'll be back. Terminator voice. That's my, the best one I'm going to do right now. <clears throat> I thought the Linking Freighter ports was good. Yes. Uh, I don't own them, but maybe something in the future. I'm still a mouser. Mouse is cool. I like being able to very quickly... Also, being able to show you guys Fader Cam when we do mixes here. Lots of fun. Uh, show my own out. Uh, yes, if you're doing DJ stuff, um, it's it show all the improvements to the show page is also really cool. And then there is a bunch of other, um, just like bug fixes that are all in here. I'm gonna leave this window open, excuse me. But we're gonna go to Studio One and take a look at some of the stuff that we're doing. Actually, before we jump in, I do want to see if this is working the way it should, and it looks like it is. Yes, I have a little bit of compression going on. Probably maybe too much. Well, I'm kind of far away. Eh, we'll change that and make a little bit more makeup gain. <clears throat> yeah, I think that'll be pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, some of the biggest things, get out of here, Fat Channel, and you get out of here too. Which also, um, I don't know if I told you guys, but that keyboard shortcut of being able to pop open the inputs and outputs. Oh man, does that make my life really, really easy. When if I go in, I want to throw some stuff on a channel or maybe a tuner on an input or you know a signal chain on whatever. Being able to quickly do that. I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. Uh, what's up, Steve K? Um, okay, so let's get into some of the improvements that I think are really cool. And uh, the biggest one for me right now is the temporary group, which if you don't remember how to do temporary groups, you select one, and on a Mac, you're going to hold down Command. On a PC, you're going to hold down Control. And you can just pick whatever channels you want. Um, I think this is an odd number of channels, but it doesn't matter. This is for demonstration purposes. So then this is the bus here. So we're just going to ignore this one. But right now, all of these are linked in a temporary group. We've done nothing else. I, you can see the only group I have going on, don't mind all that, the only group I have going on is this all channels one that I made last week when we were messing around with this uh, song. I've updated since then, temporary group, and now all of my pans are linked and they're being very silly at the moment. And I think it's because I just moved my mouse to somewhere. It's no big deal. But all of the pans on these channels are linked. This is massive. It very quickly going in and picking all your channels and boom, really fast spreading of your background vocals. If you have a bunch of stacked, doubled, quad, background vocals you just want to spread them out great you can do that so like you know if these are your main background vocals and you want them all the way out <clears throat> but then you want these ones in a little bit more and it's doing that thing again that's fine you want these ones in a little bit more and you want these ones in just a little bit more than that and then you can actually even take these ones and bring them slightly in there. So now, very quickly, I have a nice stereo spread of my vocals, and you can just do, 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 kind of select things and put them all out. Really, really big. But you saw, if I have all of these ones in, so this one's all the way to the left, and then the second one is at 50%, we'll say, and the last one's at 30%. It is proportional, so if I go in here and grab the pan on the hard left one, Really watch what's going on with the second one and the third one. And I can't hold down the, the, the keyboard shortcuts that keep this zoomed in, but pay attention here and pay attention here because I'm going to grab this one 
and really change everything. But when I do it the right way and actually grab the panner, the ratio or the proportion of those pans hold true as you're sliding across. So you can take all of them and your relative balance of your pan for your these for the what you have selected in that temporary group that change or that difference is proportional all the way across and i think that is really cool makes things super handy i'm just gonna kind of grab these guys all real quick just to spread everybody else out and quickly um <clears throat> Yes, exactly. Music motion, great for spreading vocals, guitars, blah, 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 blah. Um, they work similar to the way the group faders work. Very similar, yes. Not exactly the same, but definitely similar. Um, and you don't have to go through the, the whole old process of going here, making a group, naming it background vocals. Then you've done all that. Now you wait for your keyboard shortcuts to go away. Right-click this thing. Make sure pan is selected. You don't have to do all of that. You don't have to do all that. I'm just going to undo. Go in. Boop. Now, it, I did it on... I guess there's no way to do that, where you try and snap everybody to center real quick. But that's fine. But I can make another temporary group. Boom. Now everybody's back to center. Undo. We'll do it a couple times. And there's our stereo spread again. Uh, they work similar to the way uh, we did that. Uh, Steve K, I'd like to, gr I like to group using the control, then click inside one of the parameters, hit enter, then all in the grouped items change at the same time. Yes, when you have things grouped, but um, let's say let's do another temp group, kind of like this, and I believe my mix will still t still stay relatively proportionate. Uh, and you saw this fader was at minus 1.8. You may or may not have seen it, but we're going to change it to zero. We're going to hit enter. And our proportion of our mix, or our ratio of our mix, our balance, is the same. Just kind of the way that, the same way that temporary groups used to work. Um, so maybe I'm not doing it the same way that you're doing it, Steve. Um, I think you're think you may be thinking, and I'm just guessing, of actual groups when you have things like this. Um, which we'll just go ahead and disable that group and then we'll put these guys in we'll turn this group back on um, I think I now have pan I do have pan selected very weird let's just get rid of all that put things back to the way they were but, uh, I may not have picked up exactly what you're saying there, Steve. Um, but I, I think I maybe I know what you're talking about. Can't remember. Matthew Jones! You're not late. You didn't miss much. No, not at all. Robert Atkins, what's going on? Nobody ever shows up late, man. You guys, you know, you guys show up when you do. And that's cool by me. Uh, I look proportional until you hit center. Then it seems opposite on the right side. Yeah, I think that was just maybe a, a minor bug for me. I wouldn't say that my mileage is the same for everyone all the way across. Um, I honestly think that was a bug for me. Uh, do that panning demo again and watch where they end up on the right side. Okay, panning demo again. Let's put everybody... No, no, no. I'm going way too fast. I think he's saying that because it's a temporary group, but this is holding... Watch this channel. Watch this panner right here, because I'm going to undo. And he, I think this may be what Music Motion was saying. The pan is in the center. I made it a temporary group by command clicking this guy. And really, what I, because I was, what I was doing is I was command clicking the pans, but I must have slightly misclicked. So if I change this one, which is set all the way left, while still linked to this channel, which is set to center right now and I center this one, this one is now centered, and this one is pushed to the right because that proportion of center to all the way left is now just kind of going like this. Or, you know, I guess it might be opposite for you guys, so it would be this is going like that. <laughs> you know, I hope that makes sense. If it's like this, then it goes like that, essentially. 
<clears throat> Robert Ziegler, what's up, Robert? Um, yeah, we're just talking about grouping channels right now. We haven't dive, we we haven't gone too far into it, and I'll say. I'll tell you guys real quick. Um, I'm not the best authority to talk about like the the arranger stuff and a lot of the MIDI things that got released with version 5.2. It's not really a lot that I do. I do some programming here and there. Um, I wish I could show you more, but it's not really my strong suit. So there's a lot of great things. Honestly, Gregor's videos are killer. Just watch his because also that guy's just a genius anyway. So you should watch his stuff anyhow. Um, and he's a funny guy, so go support. All right, so if you didn't see it before, I'm going to do it real quick. All of my vocals are centered out again, and this is one of the big things with 5.2. Here's all your channels. I want to just very quickly make a basic stereo spread to get these background vocals out of the way. Maybe this is a session that I just got to mix. This is the one we were working on last week, but we're going to say that I just got it. Wink, 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 wink. Very quickly stereo spread. I'm going to ignore this one, and just so that we kind of... Uh, oh, I changed the button. I changed the folder. That's why. So we're going to ignore the bus channel, holding down command on Mac or control on PC is how you make a whatever you want to click temporary group. So if I want to make a temporary group of all of my background vocals, I'll hold down shift after I've clicked the first one and I click on the last one that selects everything that's in there. If you want to collect, if you <laughs> collect, if you want to select just certain ones and it doesn't have to be within like a folder or a group, uh, a folder or anything like that, you hold down control or commands depending on your machine and you can jump to whatever channels you want. You can add ones in between, but you can also take ones out of your group as well. Cool. Cool. So, very quick stereo spread. I have my temporary group here. Boom. All of my pans are linked. Instead of having to make a group, link all the pans within the group, the temporary group now holds the pan function within it. I make the opposite group instantly again. I'm just going to undo. I'm going to redo. Very quick, very easy basic stereo spread get these things out of the way let's do the same thing for our uh guitars i'm just going to very quickly go through and command click these all back to center same thing with our guitars all you left all you right it's that fast I didn't do the guitars before. This is the first time going to the guitars. Now I have full stereo spread of my guitars. Then I can go in and fine tune things as we need. You know, maybe I only want this one in a little bit. It keeps doing that thing for me. But I think it really is just to something for my system. So I wouldn't say that that's a bug or anything. Um, where, like, if I grab the pan and I move up and down... That, that's literally me. It's me doing that. So very quickly and easily, temporary groups to do the left-right spread is huge, especially in my workflow. Like, that's going to be massive for me. Um, let me catch up with you guys real quick. Ziggy's calling from Knoxville, Tennessee. <clears throat> calling? Did I say calling? Tuning in. What am I even thinking? <clears throat> Steve K, that is what you were see, talking about. Okay, cool. Thomas is here. Good morning. Yo, again, everybody's saying that they're late. You're not late. You're here, and you're hanging out. That's the important part. Besides, I'm happy to go over other things. Billy, I haven't forgotten. You're asking about MIDI versus audio loops. So we'll try and get into that. Do about three different pan positions on the left, three on the right. Then you group them and watch what happens when you moved one. It worked until you hit center, but not right past that. Aha. So I think Music in Motion, if I use all of these things, or I can even take these ones out. Um, or honestly, it's probably better if I do this. What he's talking about is when you have 
when you have a group or you've done something similar to what I have here where see these guitars are just a little bit out they're 60 percent left and right these are 40 ish percent left and right and these ones are about 30 percent left and right if you want to adjust your spreads here the ratio or the distance or the amount that your pans are are still going to be proportionate so <clears throat> this first channel is our uh, right 63 percent right 50 percent and right 33 percent so if i want i can take let's try one that's thin like very thin on the center um so we're going to take 33 and i'm going to push the pan further to the right but watch what happens with the other two it so this spread will stay proportionate and obviously you can't go any further than full right but watch the middle one i know it's a little hard to see and i may have messed up a little nope it actually holds the the proportions watch the middle one so obviously the first one is going to hit right first then the second one will until be you know way before the third one was because this was closest to the center so first channel that's highlighted hits full right now and the second one is at right 92 percent while the th one we're controlling is at right 74 then we push a little bit further you have full right again and then again but when you start taking these and pushing them in the opposite direction the third channel that i'm working on now the one i'm moving is in the center the second channel is at right 20 percent and the third one is at or the first one excuse me is at right 30 percent but now we're going to start pushing to the left and as soon as we go past the opposite holds true the proportions are all still there but now the spread is in a reverse function so the first the third channel is full left the second is left 81 and the third is left 70. so the spread is still there even on the opposite side it, but the proportions are off slightly if we go back to the original i did it again i think it was something like 31 you know 60 49 30. i mean it's really close but i think that's a that's what music to motion was talking about it, it the proportions are still there but it, it it reverses at that point so maybe that's what you were talking about uh let's catch up with everybody home studio trainer what's up johnny hang on i'm catching up with everyone let's see everybody saying hi <laughs> robert atkins holy crap uh it might make me want to get version five after all oh if you're talking the the temporary link yeah it's it's brilliant um <laughs> gustavo you're a lot late you're here man stop saying that <laughs> uh correct don't worry about the don't try to group left and right together uh and pan them it doesn't work like i would want yeah no it doesn't just do like an auto push out but if you do a temporary group and just go click, 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 click here <clears throat> for those who are just showing up, what we're talking about, actually, I need to do it like this. Ugh, I'm going to snap everybody back to center. I'm just holding command to do this or it would be controlling a PC. This is what we're talking about. The fast temporary group stereo spread pan temporary groups now link pan. And you saw it happen here as I was talking to you about doing the thing we now have full stereo spread on all of our guitars which is huge if you're just getting a session and you're trying to do mix prep this is so much faster you can get right to it you just go in get through things and get into working really really fast brian king <clears throat> oh i got what i got what music to motion was talking about yay Everybody's worried that Johnny's not working tonight. Johnny, get back to work. <laughs> uh, ball in the jack says hi. <laughs> you get it, Brian. Um, oh, he's working. It's just slow. Okay, cool. Um, this might be blinding. I have to reference the, the release notes again. Is everybody ready? It's going to be bright. 
oh, what am I even thinking? The splitter tool as a plugin. It's massive now. So everybody knows the old way of doing it. You would go to your channel editor, which is down here. It's this button, the little circle control guy. And then to access the splitter, you come back up to wherever your window is and you click on this dude, the little routing page. That's what, when it comes up, it says routing. This is how you would put a splitter in the old way. And it is still how you put a splitter in. Uh, it's one way, but you can go in and now type it in. And this is usually how I put my plugins in is I hit the plus, I type it in because I know exactly which one I want. That's me. I can type in splitter. Instantly pops open the routing page and normal split of just left uh, one and two, not like a five channel split, which you can do, but instantly pops open the splitter. And then maybe I want to do um, like some crazy compression. Let's go with the purple. And that's not how you spell purple. Um, but if you, this is, if you haven't seen this, this is the uh, Plugin Alliance purple um, compressor, fat compressor. You know which one it looks like. It looks like an 1176. It's kind of based on that. Um, it's a bit different though, but oh, we're gonna, let's say we're gonna be doing some parallel uh, compression for whatever reason. Also, give me a random channel, because yeah. I mean, Plugin Alliance and Brainworks, they have this thing where there's different harmonics. So yes, give me different ones, why not? Um, but built right in and go back to the routing page. Here's my compressor, but I can just easily drag it over. Once it clicks, there it goes. And now I have instant parallel compression on something that may or may not have a mix knob. Now this one does, it has a mix knob, but if you have plugins that don't have a mix knob, you can now make your own parallel processing. And this is gigantic. And you don't have to remember that you're using a splitter. In the old versions, this didn't exist. You didn't have this little pop-up that showed you you had a splitter. You had to remember. But now you can see it here, and you can see what is following, or, or you can see a visual indication with a different icon as well that there's a splitter in here. Then you can even click single click it and expand it. And now you can adjust your blend of your mix knob essentially right in your uh, your plugin window or your plugin menu or your plugin drop down, whatever you want to call this. This is massive. You know, I do a fair amount of parallel compression, especially for on like drums and stuff. Um, if I need to, I can easily just throw a splitter in. So this is this is massive. Or if you want to do, um, you want to do like delay throws. And I think it was I think it was Gregor in his video. You want to do delay throws on just the top end of your signal. Go into your splitter, change it to frequency split, and say, okay, well I just want everything above two K. Everything above two K is gonna get some kind of delay. And let's just go with the uh, an the analog delay. Analog delay, there it is. So now everything going, everything that's split from the splitter, because now it's set to frequency split, and everything that is above 2K, or 2.12, if you really wanna get technical, is gonna get split to the right side of the splitter, and then into the analog delay, which is currently set to a percentage, which is still not bad. You're gonna do more parallel processing in here. So maybe you don't wanna fully wash out all of your high frequencies. You can use the blend knob in analog delay after your splitter to really like fine tune your parallel processing, which is huge. Let me come back and catch in with you guys. Catch up with you guys. Why? I don't know how to talk. <laughs> Make you. Here we go, Johnny. You get back to work. I'm kidding. I don't care. <laughs> Take a night off, man. You deserve it. Thanks, Brian. Thanks you for letting me know it's a good show. Um, thumbs ups are always great. Subscribes if you haven't. Uh, you know, I appreciate it. Uh, JG always works, yep. Tommy, 
Hi, Tommy. <clears throat> uh, let's see, music in motion. Uh, talking to Johnny. Uh, notice when I upgraded to 5.2, most or all of your defaults and templates disappeared. You mentioned that it happened to some folks. Um, yeah, Johnny went over that in his show. I think some of his stuff was saying to run it in admin mode or run it as an administrator if you're on Windows. Oh, goodness. I think that helped um, some people. Um, but also what Gregor had said is when you're in your preference pane, uh, if you go to locations here, uh, checking this file path, make sure that this file path is the correct one and hasn't reset to a different default. I would check that music in motion because sometimes that can happen that this, after your update, it's like, oh, I don't know where any of your stuff is. It's not where I put it. Check this one. And then maybe, and then even, even before you run as admin, check that one. And I see if I can find them maybe from backup or another folder, but just letting you know what happened to me also. Johnny, that would be a good one for you to share as well is the locations, making sure, because look at this. Let me zoom in. User data location, songs, projects, shows, presets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If this file path is off, then it, it could make you lose all of that stuff. It's still on your computer. You just have to tell Studio One where it is. It's really all it is. <clears throat> What's Tommy saying? Every time I see you use Studio One, I keep wondering why I don't use it yet. Yeah, man. Get on the train. Like, it's so cool. And they keep doing updates, Tommy. Tommy, they keep doing updates. And, like, they're cool updates, too. And Tommy, you have a bunch of like external synthesizers and stuff, if I remember correctly. Um, there's massive integration for external stuff. Like you, you would love it, dude. For parallel processing, I prefer the way Reason did it. Well, you know what, Music Motion, you can prefer whatever you want. I don't care. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, you just right click on a channel and select create parallel channel and it also creates a mixer channel for it It's definitely a way to do it. Yes. Uh, I mean, I could I could easily go here um, there, There's no fast way to do it like that. Why is that even here? That's always been uh, Oh <gasps> That's new Right click on a channel audio IO setup and it's right here Ooh, That's something you probably didn't hear from anyone and we all discovered together. Audio IO setup, I can go right to my IO from in here. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, if I create a new send, no. No, but I mean making a parallel where if like you just add a bus here and then a couple changes. But I see what you're saying where it's just like click, 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 click. I hear you, music's motion. Um, Oh, Tommy, what does he use currently? I think Tommy's using... Uh, he'll tell you. Whatever. I think he's using Pro Tools. Pro Tools... 11? Tommy, are you on 11 or 10? Super Chat from Music to Motion, $5. Thank you so much, bud. Great examples. Thanks, bud. Um, up -boo -boo -boo. Uh, boo -boo. I'm catching up with you guys, and so that's why I'm just making noises. Thumbs up done. Thank you, Brian. Uh, that's also great advice, Tim. Confirming the path. Yeah, that that's huge. If the path is off, you're not going to find your stuff. It's just not going to happen. Uh, thanks, guy. Tim talks better with thumbs up. Uh, maybe it's more clear. I don't know that. <laughs> Pro Tools 10 HD. I knew it was a version of Pro Tools. I couldn't remember exactly what it was. I know you and I have been going back and forth. Um, still works. Uh, and I know it back and forth. Logic slave for fun toys that won't work on the old Hackintosh. Yes. Um, yeah, it still works, man, but Tommy, eventually it's not gonna, but it was watching Johnny's show and then Tim's like two masterclasses in one night. Oh, thank you, Robert. Uh, Raul, first time watching your channel. Thanks for joining, man. Thank you. Uh, I am just a few days into Studio One coming from Pro Tools. I can already tell your channel will be very helpful. Thanks so much. Raul, I am also a Pro Tools convert. Um, I still use Pro Tools, you know, 
uh, pretty regularly. So I do, um, I do still know it pretty well, but I am, I am also a Pro Tools convert, just like Tommy, he's using Pro Tools 10. That's the last version I purchased as well. And it's on this machine here. Um, but I mean, I still use it, especially when, if I go work at somebody else's studio, it's still so, uh, prevalent in, in other studios, um, for the day job, uh, we use Pro Tools. So if you do have questions, by all means, either ask them in comments, send them to me, uh, reach out to me on social media, whatever you want to do. Um, Tim talked audio on all this stuff. So <clears throat> Raul, by all means, uh, we're here to help. Also, Raul, if you want, you can join the Discord. And there's a link for the Discord in the chat box or the description of this or Music to Motion, who's going to help me out because I'm going to ask him to, is going to drop a link for the Discord in the chat in a couple minutes once he copies and pastes it. So um, we're building a community over there where we're all here to help each other and give feedback and provide collaborations and all kinds of cool stuff. So you can go ahead and join the Discord. And if you have questions, you can reach out to me and the other people within the community home studio trainer but you can't post links well you know what we're just gonna have to fix that there you go home studio trainer you got bumped up you're in the big leagues now if you did it for me i'm doing it for you you're a mod bud uh no m audio cons code 61 product support oh brian i'm sorry to hear that i don't have an um uh, i don't have a code 61 so i can't help you um, maybe reach out to PreSonus directly. They might be able to help you out a bit better than I could. Uh, PM a link to me and I'll post. <clears throat> Billy Morgan, I haven't forgotten. We'll get there. Tim, do you ever, uh, do you ever move Studio One sessions between Mac and PC? Any issues? No. No, there's never any issues. I, even between these two machines, I can create, uh, I can use my Sphere membership, Tommy. Um, or, I mean, you know, we would just transfer files. I mean... <laughs> Um, but I can easily, or I can even, because it's on the same network, I can just access them from here and just play them off of like the other machine. I've done that too. So, um, but yeah, you can move files around, uh, very easily. So I wouldn't worry about it there, Tommy. Uh, I converted to studio one from pro tools. I don't regret it. Good for you, Robert. Neither do I. Thomas, hey, nice to catch up on the stream tonight. Loving the new update, particularly the sound variations. Yes, the sound variations is really cool. I'm hoping we can get into it. Um, maybe we will in a few minutes. Uh, boop, 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 boop. <clears throat> hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, there's Raul saying that he's uh, he's going to join the Discord. Uh, everybody else is welcome to join as well, so we can continue to grow the uh, community. Music to motion converted from Cakewalk Zone, our reason, blah, 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 blah. Now he's on Studio One. Just wait a couple, couple more weeks, and then he's going to switch over to Cubase. And then after that, he's going to go to Logic. That guy can't make up his mind. <laughs> Pro Tools got uh, the proprietary with everything, not to mention very expensive. Got two proprietary. Is Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I hear you. Home studio training. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're excited because you're now a king of the castle or one of the kings. Um, oh, yeah. There's John. There's a link to Johnny's external MIDI, which honestly, I don't do a lot of external MIDI stuff. So check out his stuff. Gregor has things out there. A bunch of guys have um, better tutorials on external MIDI because that's not really the, something I do a lot. I don't. I think I have um, an Alesis reverb unit downstairs somewhere that I could probably take out and make a video with um, at some point. And probably should, but I think that's the only MIDI thing I have. I don't even have, like, drum machines. <laughs> I, I did it the old-fashioned way. Um, let's see... Uh, and then uh, Robert is saying... Uh, Oh, that's right. Uh, so for production features, Pro Tools is still way behind everyone else. Well, they paved the way. I will say this. Pro Tools did pave the way for all the uh, uh, the DAWs that we have now. So you do have to pay a little bit of respect to Pro Tools. Although now everybody can do a lot of the things and have, a bunch of them have surpassed Pro Tools. Pro Tools is still strong, but there's things. Um uh, <clears throat> <laughs> more on that's what the show was on sound variations all right <laughs> brag about it why don't you we're getting into it i'm trying to catch up with you guys um robert atkins is keep going back and forth with brian king about why he's converted over <clears throat> i think those are whales 
<laughs> I don't even know your name. Um, hey, I recently found uh, you from your mic instrument line level video. Oh, thanks for watching that one. I wanted to get a stage box with AVB and software mixer instead of an interface. I like the insane amount of inputs. Any thoughts? Uh, what are your use cases? That's definitely huge. I mean, uh, if Tommy's still watching, he and I work together, our... Um, at our day job, our whole system is networked audio. We're audio over IP using a Dante system. It's not AVB, but it's very similar kind of thing. <clears throat> our Dante system, um, we have, God, how many receivers and transmitters do we have for Dante? Oh, I think for receivers, we have 31 units. And for transmitters, we have like 40 different units and all of these things are all interconnected on this network uh audio over ip network you know, the big one is called dante and that's what we're using um and you can route anything you want anywhere um and depending on the unit itself um you can route it to multiple places as well and uh and if the unit you're using doesn't support that that you can do more than two routes is some of the smaller ones. Um, you can create what it, they call a multicast and then you can spread it out to more. Um, very, very handy, especially in the big um, infrastructure that we're working with over there. Blades, what's up, Blades? Better late than never. Nobody is ever late. They're here when they're here and they're going to hang and be cool because that's why we're here. <clears throat> Those were words. Um, you have more than one Discord on your YouTube comments. Do I? That seems odd. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to do like that. And I'm going to put my own in. I'm going to drop a Discord link in for you guys right now. I'm going to keep talking to you while we're doing this. But I'm going to put it right into the chat. So that anybody that wants to join, 100% can. Of course, it's going to install an update right now. Because why the hell not? <clears throat> Starting. Okay, it's going. Well, oh, okay, here we go. Here's this one. Here's this one. Invite people. I want to edit my link so that it never expires. Generate a new link. Copy. Coming over here. Wait a second. Copy. Paste it. There you go. And it is now in the chat. If anybody wants to join the Discord, there is a link for you. I can quit that and come back over here and then go back to this one and show you guys. You didn't need to see all that anyway. <clears throat> So let's see what's going on. I think I'm catching up with you guy. If I upgraded the five right now, it would cost 150 bucks. Totally worth the investment. Uh, Robert, I think you're probably jumping from version four to five. That's my guess anyway. Who knows? Maybe it was three. Right. Darren, uh, still no MIDI on the show page. What do you mean, Darren? Or are you looking for something specific so that you can actually edit the notes in the show page? Or being able to use MIDI triggers from this show page? Let me know what you're thinking. Because that's something that I think would be huge. That's something that um, like Ableton has, is MIDI triggers. So you can like cue songs and go like that. But with the integration of the Studio One remote on, an, uh, uh, on a mobile device and being able to do things from there, that is very handy. If, you're, if that's what you're even talking about. Um, uh, all of us are building a great community of folks that love to educate and help others. I love your channel and Tim's. Uh, I don't watch the others very often. I appreciate you, Music Promotion. Um, did you ever switch your stream audio over L like you were talking about? Tommy, yes, I'm going through the little Behringer mixer now, and things are much better. I have few, if any, audio issues now, and I'm actually driving the... the uh, inputs or the outputs, I should say, uh, a little bit harder. And I have finite control. So thank you, Tommy. Uh, I think you are correct. Gregor talked about that not being implemented yet. Yet. I'm sure those guys are constantly working on updates and they're reading user feedback. Um, so I would just go into the forums and say like, hey, you know, you should, uh, you know, push this one a little bit harder. Discord links do expire. Not when you set them to never expire there, music to motion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this one, the one that's in the chat right now, will never expire. So even if you're watching a replay of this video and you're interested in joining the Discord, go ahead and use that link. It's in the live chat, which is still a part of the replay. You just have to click the little button. 
Um, you currently have three separate links on comments. Robert Atkins is on 4.6, and then he's going to upgrade, and it's going to be about 150 bucks. But uh, there is a sale if you go through Waves right now. Waves just pushed a, a promo uh, with the code Waves30. I think might get you 30% off. So look if you can get a little bit extra off there, Robert. Uh, version 5 is really cool. Sphere is likely even better. Yes, yeah, Sphere has a bunch of add-ons, which we can actually kind of look at right now. Um, I'm going to come over here and move my face real quick. I'm going to move my face wee over here um, because everything that we're going to be doing is in the browser. So when you're in your browser, you can come over to shop and you, you know, the shop was always there, but cloud, this is where PreSona Sphere is. And this gives you access to your Sphere account so that you can find all of your workspaces, which is underneath workspaces, or if you're invited to any other workspaces, those are show up under collaborations. So in collaborations, and I'm not going to go too deep into this because, I mean, honestly, I only have the one, but I don't know what anybody wants to be show. Collaborations, here's the one that I'm a part of now. I need to join more. We need, we need some resources to be able to help each other out. But here is uh, the lab from Music to Motion. Hey, that guy's here. But this is one that I'm a part of. I can go in here and I can find different ways. I, you know, he's got a folder here with lyrics, which one of the things right now is there's no text support. So if this was like a document or a spreadsheet or a PDF or something, you can't see it yet. I would imagine that that's going to come in the future. Um, but very easily... I can go in and I've previewed this in the background. It very quickly downloaded a small playable copy of this MP3 and it's not routed to your guys's output, but I could easily just hit play. And in my room, I heard that happen live before even like downloading it or dragging it into session, which I could do. I could just come to the bottom of the session and just pull it in. And the stripes means it's downloading. I'm seeing it convert from an MP3 because that's the kind of file it was. The download is already done. I'm just going to cancel all this because I don't need any of that. But quickly and easily, I'll get rid of that thing. I can just drag stuff in right from the workspace, right into this session that that funky little beat had nothing to do with. So being able to access your workspaces right inside here, brilliant. B brilliant. So that's one of the pluses of a Sphere membership or being a mem uh, being part of Sphere. You don't have to do the monthly subscription, I don't think, to get this. If you're using Studio One Five Pro, the this is where things get a little shaky for me, and I'm not really sure um, if you still would get this if you're not a Sphere member, but uh, you've just purchased the Studio One Five outright. But maybe you have like a free version of um, like the free sign up for Sphere. I don't remember. Yippee! Let's go over here again. Okay, because we're. I mean, like this is this is great that there's all this stuff in here, and there's so much more that you can do in here. I know that um, Gregor had a, a great video about all the stuff that you can do inside of there. Let's catch up with you guys again real quick because I'm falling way behind. Oh, so yeah, Darren wants to be able to send like DMX or um, OSC commands or anything like that from the show page. Uh, that is something that I would also agree would be huge, especially when building a live show is like, OK, well, I'm going to play this song now. And when it hits the chorus, I want my lights to change to blue because this is the, the sad part of the song or whatever it is. I think that could be really huge. Tommy says it sounds great, and that's why he's asking. Yeah, it's everything's fe being fed out of my Apollo dual quarter inch into a little Behringer mixer, which is USB, and it, that's it's feeding you guys. Um, and Tommy, I'm using the 414 mic because uh, when we did our mic shootout a couple weeks ago, everybody liked the way this one sounded on me. So we switched from the where is it down here? Ooh. I switched from the road shotgun over to this guy, and that's uh, that's what we've been sticking with for a little while and I'm going to ride this guy out for a while. Robert Atkins, I'm glad there are channels like this. I had to go on Groove 3 to find out how to use Studio One for a while. Robert, 
I was, uh, you know, I, I've i used plenty of uh, DAWs and recordings. I've done a bun- bunch of recordings before I started making videos as well. And I, ne- when I was looking for resources, I also couldn't find them. And that's why I started one myself. And that's kind of what drove me. So I'm glad that you find it helpful because uh, it he- honestly, when I started this, it helped me too. Yeah, syncing lights and amp channel switching via MIDI in the show page. Well, you can do... Um, Oh, yeah, like if you're trying to send MIDI signals to your amp, which can receive MIDI information in. Hmm. Now, Darren, you might be able to do channel switches on your amp. Because if you're using external synthesizers, you can change your sounds. But I don't, don't quote me. Again, MIDI is not my strongest suit. But I think you might be able to change amp signals. And channels. If you know what this MIDI CC channel is, then in different sections you can say, okay, we'll cut to this one here. Um, I don't know how in depth it is. If you're using something like a Kemper, which has a million different parameters, um, it'd be a ton of programming. Uh, but if you're using something where it's literally just like a MIDI pedal and it's like three buttons and you're going from clean to crunch to lead, you might be able to. Um, that would be huge, though, too. I think that would be really brilliant is if you just had like a laptop setting up for a show and a little MIDI interface and you can have it. Uh, the MIDI would hit like your amps and your effects and do all of that. And then maybe even convert a MIDI out or have a MIDI bridge to DMX or OSC or something like that to be able to trigger lights would really uh, step a show up, especially when you're like a one man band or trying to do stuff um, on your own. David, I com- oh goodness, hang on, David. I saw it. I'm coming back. What has gone on? Okay, here we go. David, I completely lost the PreSonus live stream. Trying to transform, a uh, transition. Excuse me, from Ableton to Studio One. I appreciate your videos. Thank you very much, David. Uh, uh, anyway, to work around my. Anyways, to work around my love for session view. David, um. I'm not ultimately familiar with Session View for Ableton. So I'm sorry, I can't answer that question right now. I can do some research, but I, right now I can't answer that question. Nmon1, any way to save folder plus channels because I route my DI and wet amp guitar and need the same folder every time I record guitar or want specific grouping too. Um, yeah. Mnom, you can do one of two different things. You can, um, you can, uh, if you're working with Studio One Five, uh, if you're working with Studio One Pro in version five, and I think they had this in version four, but it, definitely in version five, um, what you can do is if you have a template, which you should definitely build when you're doing like a lot of writing and recording. If you go to Song and import Song Data. You know, uh, I'm just going to find one here real quick. Uh, so, like, template making. Maybe this one has it. I don't have one. What's going on here? Um, like, if I can go in here and I can go um, Tim Talks Audio Vocal Setup. So, I can open this song file. And in here is, like, my buses. Here's my audio channels. I had a marker track. I can pull marker track information in. Um, tempo and time signatures. I mean, needed to pull any of that in. Let me see if I can find a different one. There's my keyboard shortcut for it. So that's one that I assigned, which is um, Command Shift I. Did I? Or maybe that's a default. I can't remember. I think maybe I did that one. But if I go to songs and I go to <laughs> maybe template making, let's see what's in this guy. Okay, so I can very easily. Okay, so it doesn't show you that it's a folder. Oh, this little icon shows you that it's a folder. So very easily, if I needed to pull in all of my guitar stuff, I can just click on this, and it's a packed folder, so all of my guitars are going to come in as well. And that's going to have all of my information, so all of my routing is going to pull in, all of my plugins. If you come over here to your console options and say inserts, the volume and pan, all the sends, if you already have that stuff in, make yourself a template of all the stuff you use very frequently, and you can very quickly and easily pull it in with import song data. 
I think this is huge. This is this was a, a big thing for me when it came in to Studio One by uh, uh, when st <laughs> to Studio One Pro. And honestly, if you're using Artist and you're not doing this kinds of things, you can make a template um, <clears throat> and then just have two songs open. So because I can go here and I can just open another song. So let's go back into that same one template making. I'm going to open it up and you if I open it now, it's, you're going to lose my voice. But stick with me. OK, you're going to lose my voice for a minute, but watch what I can do. What I need to do real quick is just move my face because what we're going to be looking at is up here where it says song and this little down arrow here. You may or may not lose me. Okay, watch what I'm doing. And I'm back. Uh, so now, um, you have that other song open. You can, you can like save your things and um, like save your chains and your inputs. But if like really the easiest way to do it is gonna be if you're using Studio One Five Pro is import song data. That's gonna pull all of your stuff in. And it's gonna be fast and easy, and that's the way I would do it. Um, and I, I hope that helps. Uh, if not, consider upgrading to Pro. Uh, before 4, there weren't that many tutorials on Studio One on YouTube. Agreed. Um, the thing about Sphere that blew me away was the collaboration feature. Yes, the workspaces, and especially the integration with work workspaces now, is uh, really big. Um, have you gotten a quote from Alps Media? I check with him also. Yeah, you could also reach out to Alps Media. He might be able to, to help you out. I mean, he is running a business, so help the help him out but reach out to him uh add on the cool collab blew me away yeah but you know that's another thing with the presona sphere membership is you get all of the add-ons as well all the updates all the add-ons all the sound sets all the packages blah 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 blah, blah. Yeah, everything uh, i'm gonna fast forward through <clears throat> yeah like we're saying create a template uh, beep, 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 dee, 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 music emotion. All you have to do in order to collab in Sphere is create a free PreSonus account. See, there it is. Uh, you don't even have to own Studio One. Ah, so you can also transfer files that way. Good to. Thank you for the reminder, Music to Motion. Uh, we were talking about the example JG and I did for live collaborating, uploaded, and he downloaded the Pamela folder in less than 10 minutes. See, especially you know if you're hardwired on your internet, things can happen real fast. Presonus monitor station works uh, like your little Behringer. Uh, it's very, very, probably very similar. This is, it's literally just like the the one XLR input mixer thing. Um, but yeah, it's not my monitor controller. I do have a monitor controller in the rack over here. It actually is the Presonus uh, central station, but I don't have the, the desktop remote because I got mine used. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit through some of this uh, the, some of this chat stuff. I do want to catch up with you guys because I you know I, I do enjoy these talks with you guys. Uh, so are you saying you rode out that other one or you're now going to ride out on this one? No, you said that. I didn't say that at all. <laughs> I do want to I still want to thank my friends over at Road for sending me that and this arm. Um they they're awesome guys over there. I got to reach out to them again and say, "Hey, how are you doing?" <clears throat> uh Brian King has a UMC 404. Hey, man, those things are cool. If it works for you, keep or keep using it until you can't. Uh yes, he should be able to change presets on his amp setting it up as an external instrument, but it is tricky and if the show pays allows it. Yeah, it's it's going to be a fair amount of programming. Uh, and yeah, I'm really trying to catch up with you guys. I'm going to fast forward through some of these things. He stems and you can collab with anyone in any DAW. Yes, if you just export the stems, then it's just a WAV file or whatever kind of file you choose it to be. Um, well, that's pretty awesome. Right now, there is no session view in Studio One like Ableton. Hmm. Sad. 
Maybe in the future. Who knows? Make it make it a request. Feature request for version six, maybe. Uh, Brian w- Wallace. Brian, thanks for coming. Uh, again, I'm going to tell you, you're not late. You're here, man. And you're here and you're hanging out. So thank you for spending some time with me. Uh, uh, excellent. That's what I wanted. And, and more. Yeah, you're welcome, Mnom. <laughs> That's a great name. Mnom. M mom, I'm, I can't, well, well, I was and right up until I couldn't say it anymore. Um, I'm really electric when recording and never opened a template. Didn't know anyone just used templates to load from. Yeah. You know, the templates make things so much faster. You make your template of the things you use all the time. Like, that's why I have my template is if I'm writing that, that's my writing template. It's like, okay, well, what kind of guitar sound do I need? Do I need something clean? Do I need something kind of heavier, but only breaks up a little? Or do I need something ridiculous? I have multiple channels of those same amps to be able to do that. A ton of vocal channels with some um, compression on them. Bass channels with different amps on them. I have two different writing templates with different drum sounds on them. And then when you're into mixing, you can open up mixing templates and be like, okay, well, I just need my audio, and I'm just going to drag it up into the template, save as a new thing, and then there you go. You're good to go from there. Templates are huge, huge time savers. So definitely invest some time in yourself on building some templates. <clears throat> actually what I need and have to delete things or hide what I don't need yeah their templates are a starting point um, but yeah I mean they, they can if you use them well and you design them for your needs they can be time savers which is very big but they really are like I wouldn't just try and grab someone's template my template is my template because of what works for me. I might take inspiration from other people's templates, um, but my template is my template. Yeah. <laughs> See the use for templates a lot of time. Templates don't fit the session. They don't always do, but it gets you there faster. And that's really the important part is it gets you to the end point faster. Because the less time you have to worry about doing every single little thing, like make a new track, name the track, do the thing, a compressor, here's my reverb. Blah, blah, blah. The more you have to do that, even though you might get efficient at doing all of those steps, if you just load in from your template, it's done like that. Then you just have to do minor tweaks to get it closer to the sound you want. So... And then like you can leave some of that open to interpretation. But if you're pulling in audio channels with the routing in, maybe some sends in there or um, a little bit of compression or even bypassed. You can put the plugins in bypass and just turn them on when you need. That's what templates are for. <clears throat> uh, so hang on. Robert Atkins is saying... A lot of time templates don't fit the session. We were just talking about that. Even the mixing part, especially you get a new plugins and you've got to change your effects chain. Then overwrite your template or update it to a new one. Get your template open. Try out your new plugin that you're like, this is the coolest thing. I need to replace that thing with this new one. Make a new template, put a date on it and say, look, this is the one I want to use now. And you can go from there. And you can just keep building your templates. Then, you know, whatever your latest and greatest mix is, turn it into a template. Because maybe the next thing you're mixing, you can slap in there with some minor tweaks, and you're good to go. Let me just go to the plank. I'm feeling what I have to want as I go. Do uh, Don't even always record guitar. You guys are big help. You're very welcome, and mon. Uh, I have a template for Spitfire, Symphony Orchestra, and some other VSTIs. I use trailer, film sites, stuff. And you probably have it spread out to different channels so that you can do different mixes with that. That's one use of templates, yeah. <clears throat> Robert, I had a question for Tim. Behringer has a new set of drum mics, seven for $99. It's on pre-order only right now. Want to know your thoughts? That's a lot of microphones for not a lot of money. What you could do, and they're not paying me to say this, hang on, it's here. You could pick up some of these. These are the PreSonus ones. This is the the DM7 drum mic set from PreSonus. Um, I forget the retail for this. 
but it's not a lot. You also get seven mics in here. You get a kick drum mic, you get four, that can go over there. You get a kick drum mic, you get four um, instrument mics or like smaller dynamic mics. So like snare drum, tom, tom, tom. Um, and then you get the stereo set of pencil condenser overheads. And I think maybe like three or 400 bucks, really not, really not a lot of money. I'm about to put those onto a drum set and record them into a video and you guys will see that soon enough. I really have to do it because boy, do I have to. <laughs> Um, but the Behringer 7 for 99, uh, I haven't used them. I don't know. Uh, maybe I can try and reach out to Behringer to see if I can get my hands on some. Uh, I can't promise anything. Uh, Doesn't Mr. Dislike like to come to your shows? No. Everybody here is cool. We just hang. We hang and talk sometimes. Sometimes we hang and mix. Sometimes we hang and play with plugins. We just hang. And even still, somebody wants to come in and dislike. That's cool, man. Just come. Th thanks for coming and hanging out. I don't care. Uh, -boo -boo -boo. We've already seen him dancing. Hello, oh, whenever Studio One does any type of processing, they should just have a little icon of Tim dancing. <laughs> I'll I'll record myself in front of a green screen for that and just it's doing some processing. Uh. Bri uh, Blades has a scratch pad template for every single thing he uh, starts, which is a smart thing to do. Um, I have a few templates, a few writing templates, which are kind of the same, except I changed the uh, the drum VSTI. Um, and most of my guitar things are in there. But again, it just gets me started. The routing there is there. It's ready to go. Just turn it on, tweak an amp, pull open a different preset for something, and go. Uh, Darren, is there a click track in the song page or do you need to import your own? Honestly, Darren, what probably what the easiest thing to do is, um, let me go into here real quick. What I would do is if you go down to your metronome down here and you click on the wrench, you get this icon, you can render your click track right here. You can hit this render button and it makes a new audio file. So you can then import that into your session and then send that to a separate output to be just in your ears mix or you know feeding your monitors or whatever it is. So I would render the click track, which will follow your session. If you have this weird, uh, no, weird, if you have a, a, a lot of tempo changes or click changes in your session, but you've already mapped it out, you can render your click and it'll render all of those things to a new audio file cut it at the end of your song or at the last hit of your song and then send that to your song, song page. That's what I would do. How do I add my template to the list on the start page? Um, I want, if I go to the start page, you may not see it, but if you don't hear me for a second, I'm still gonna make it so that you can see. So ready, begin. So let's go to the start page and can you, okay, you can still hear me. So when I'm looking at this start page, if I'm new, new song, and then you're probably looking here. If you're looking for your templates, you just have to come up to the top and click on user, and then you'll see your created templates. Um, so I hope that that is what you're talking about and will help you. If you're not already seeing it, I would just hit the user thing, and that's probably where your templates are. Uh-huh. And Mon One was your first band in Japan. Oh, cool. Uh it means nothing. Not nothing. Japanese, but literally nothing. Like it's just it's non non nonsense. Uh, oh no, my drummer thought of it, but I stopped using it when I uh, having to give my email. <laughs> uh and Mon, what kind of music did you did you play in your bands? Tell me. Because uh, I've mixed a Japanese hardcore band. Uh, I do a fair amount of work for hardcore bands. So uh, Templates save a ton of time if you are if you are routing. Yes, it can really speed things up. I have a few vocal tracks, all of my V-drums, Mimic Pro tracks, a few acoustic and electric guitars, and a starter, keyboard, piano loaded in. It's super helpful as a starting point. And that really is what it is, is a starting point, something to get you going and working faster. And that's really the, the name of the game, is get in, get going, um, so that you're not wasting 
not only your your client's time, but your time. It was like you can make you can increase your um, uh, your profitability or your your value per hour because you're not wasting time going make a track, name the tracks, check the routing, and engage, put on a compressor. Oh, they want reverb. Import data. Boop. Done. Let's go. Hit record. <laughs> I try and scroll, and the thing jumps. And then I have to catch up with you guys. Uh, you can save a template update during save dialogue. I'll ask if you want to save it as a new one or replace an existing. Correct. Um, oh, start a box opening video thing and reviews. I've done a few. I have the. I, I've done a, a couple for PreSonus. I need to reach out to some more companies. Um, I I enjoy checking these things out because usually what I do is I unbox and I check out what's going inside and then I give you a follow-up video of what the thing actually does. And I did that for the Quantum 2626 that PreSonus was nice enough to send to me. I was able to take it out of the box. Um, and that's that video still does really well for people who are interested in getting the 2626. Um, and then I did a follow-up video where I recorded drums through it. And that was a lot of fun. I just went into my basement and threw my mics on. It was before this, um, the DM7 came out. So I just put the mics that I have on and all that into the 2626. Studio Steve, anybody else having problems? Windows blank with Amplitude 5 and Studio 4. Mm, sorry to hear you're having problems. I don't have Amplitude. I, I hope somebody else um, can help you out with that, Studio Steve. Bunch of companies make drum mic kits. Prices and quality vary. That they do. Uh, wasn't it MS Word where you had the help file? When you ask the questions of a robot dancing? That's where I got the idea from. Uh, I remember Clippy. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember robot dancing. Mika's back. Hey, Mika. <clears throat> yeah, Clippy. Paperclip dude. It's like, oh, looks like you're writing a note. Mm hmm. Uh, let's see. Hang on, I'm catching up. Uh, uh, regular. Yeah, yeah. Mika, you better become a regular. I'm kidding. You can, you do your thing, Mika. <laughs> uh, can we make Mika Ahmad? I suggest it. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. He gotta prove himself. There will be a test of wits. <laughs> Uh oh yeah maybe Mika can join the Midnight Bar uh and Music to Motion drop the link in the in the chat so if anybody wants to join the Midnight Bar Zoom meetup uh, after this show link is in the chat Amnom you are in the metal of hardcore I played three Japanese guys because no uh because Ono worked on bases as a civilian while I was in Air Force oh very cool. Yeah, I, I mixed a live set for the band Num, who is based out of Japan, and they were they, it was nuts. It was a good show. Uh, I didn't get this. I, I didn't see it live. I mixed the the video record and the multi track. Um, but even still, just from listening to it, they were they were nuts and a lot of fun. So that's really cool. Product. <laughs> uh. Do do do. Again, I'm trying to scroll smoothly. Chat, yeah, the Audix drum mic kits. Um, I mean, the Audix D6 is a legendary kick drum mic. The D4 are tom mics. I think the D2 is the snare mic or the uh, the high tom mics. I don't remember the exact numbers. Uh, I'm pretty good with models, but uh, maybe I'm off. Uh, Blades is asking, do I have a fader port? Yes, I do. I'm about to uh, update my channel with a new one for the on the S1 5.2 and the sync of the mix view in the fader port now being fixed in 5.2. I do have a fader port if I come into here and turn my fader cam on. Here he is. He's right here. And then I'm doing faders. I think I'm on my drums right now, so you're not actually seeing it on the screen, but let me jump my banks and just change my channel real quick. And there, now you're seeing me do stuff. And because I'm doing way too much, all of my faders are on the screen are freaking out, but la -da -dee. There. See, they're all dancing. They're all doing their thing. But yes, I do have a fader port. Whoop. And yeah, there's more integrations and, up and bug fixes and upgrades that came in 5.2. <clears throat> Steve, Steve is uh, appreciating my uh, just being outlandish because I am. Um, 
Where did the scene lock go? Post version five. Where did the scene lock go? Mika, I don't know if I can answer that because I ever used. Uh, are you testing me? Mm, Mika? It's amazing how much, uh, Robert, yes, it is amazing how much recording has become more and more relatively affordable these days. The downside is, one downside, and it's not for sure, but one downside is because it is more relatively available, um, it's great that way more music is coming out, but the experience levels are going down because, uh, and like acceptance of mediocre processes has con has gone down a little bit now like all the major stuff that's out there still has like the same production value but because things are more relatively affordable some guy can walk into guitar center with a thousand dollars and walk out saying i'm a recording engineer technically yes you are but do you know how to use this microphone do you know what all the little symbols do on it do you know why it sounds deeper when i get closer to it and it sounds kind of thinner when it's further away you need to build that experience and i agree people should get stuff and build that experience themselves and i think it's great that there so many more people are more creative it comes at a minor cost though but please you know, keep doing it though i mean it, it's, it helps me because people come find my videos when they need help. <laughs> uh, Darren, will Quantum give me low enough latency to use it live? I'm using it with a 2012 iMac. Your iMac won't keep up with the Quantum. The Quantum I got down, I was able to get my early 2015 MacBook Pro, I was able to get the Quantum 2626 down to a block size of 64. And it was pretty stable. 64 um, uh, bits, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> so your 2012 iMac, uh, which has an older port, uh, built-in port, I think it's Thunderbolt 2. Well, your older iMac, a 2012, would it have Thunderbolt 2? Or would it have Thunderbolt? Uh, I can't remember exactly what was on, on those ones. Um, but your iMac will actually struggle to keep up with the the Quantum. If you had a new MacBook Pro, it would be lightning fast. So the, the, that's the whole thing with it. Is it's a Thunderbolt three on the twenty six twenty six, blazing fast. My computer couldn't stay. My, my computer couldn't handle how fast the thing wanted to go. Um, <clears throat> could I have some advice on ways to make my vocals sound? fuller um where are you where do you th roy where do you think your vocals are lacking now other than being full there's a few things you could do one is record your vocals more and by that i mean literally just do more takes layer them and you'll get this nice little chorusing like a natural chorusing effect of the vocals kind of like um the timing being off a little bit and the pitch being slightly off and now you can correct those things but i would still leave a little um, I would still leave a little uh, differences in each one and not just literally copy paste because then you're just going to make it louder but sing it a bunch of different times and then to even make it fuller sing it an octave down or a fifth down like sing a harmony underneath it on certain parts to fill it in um, other than that it could be your microphone. It could be your recording environment. There's a lot of different things. Um, it could just really be the EQ that you're using on your vocal. Maybe you just need to add a little bit of warmth. There's a lot of different things, Roy. Uh, without actually hearing, I can only speculate, but I hope some of those things help you out. Uh, is there any possible way to get a keyboard control to go through the different banks like the fader ports? <laughs> Mika always knows the answer to his question. Is there a possible way to get a keyboard control to get keyboard control to go through the different banks like the fader ports do? I don't know. Setting up for volume and panning. I, I uh, yeah. Oh. Hmm. Robert, I don't think right now, but again, 
don't quote me because I have the fader port. I don't have like a MIDI keyboard with faders and stuff on it to try and do that mapping. So you could do like MIDI CC commands to do all that stuff. But I think once you assign one, it's only for one and it's not really the same way that like a fader port would. So sorry. 60,000 uploads per day to SoundCloud. Exactly. There's, there's a lot of music getting made, so... Uh, version 4.6 point bleh, had a scene preset in the mixer sidebar. Um, it had a lock. The new scene memory system has no lock or unlock. Oh. Mixer scenes. Mm, yeah, I don't really use those, Mika, so I am sorry. Select one of every call. Uh, update scene, recall scene, rename scene, add scene, update scene, remove scenes. Yes, sorry, Mika. The only thing I could say, and let's just kind of dive in real quick, is let's just make a new one, and we'll call this Mika. If I right-click on it, I only get recall, rename, update, and remove scene. Um, I mean, we can look here for scene. And let's see, add scene, next scene, previous, remove, remember, update, uh, show scenes, show scenes. Mika, it may have gone away. Maybe it was causing too many bugs or too many problems, and they've temporarily taken it out. Um, that's only a guess that I have. But I am sorry. I don't know. And away Mika goes. <laughs> Uh, Brian Wallace, after next week, I'll be here on time. That's fine. Uh, I quit my night job for these streams. <laughs> uh, oh, you're in a, you're in a new position. Congratulations on the, on the new position. Everyone, round of applause for Brian. Uh, you should join the Midnight Bar and personally get to know more folks. Maybe Mika will bless us with his words. Drew, Tim has a video of Numb on his website. I do. I have. Uh, I was able to link the video after it came out. Usually when I get these live sets to mix, I don't get the videos. Um, I just get the audio and I have to do it all, you know, by ear. Who would have guessed? Um, but then I also, I, I get to see it later um, once it's all synced up and everything. So... Uh, that's doing stuff for hate56.com. Um, and he, he, that guy, Sonny, is a brilliant dude. Um, he actually just created his own um, handheld controller for his camera so that he can do stuff like this, like while he's live. Uh, live streaming a band but he built it into he 3d printed himself a gimbal handle for his camera so he can do it live without taking his hands off the camera brilliant guy uh the 2012 are core duo processors they won't run catalina or v5 they choke on v4 and heavy plug-in use yeah thank you mika Oh my goodness, you guys are going crazy with the chat and I appreciate it. I know I'm way off. I'm trying to catch up with you guys, but you're typing faster than I'm answering because I, I nerd out. <laughs> Double triple triangle vocals or anything else is wonderful. Yes, you get a fuller voice and it gets more power. Um, what are your thoughts on the IO Station 24C? I think it's really cool. I did, was able to do an unboxing and demo of that thing. I think it's really handy. If If I was doing like remote podcast kinds of things or i was doing like if if i um was going on vacation somewhere but i still like had ideas like having the io station 24 would be really handy to have it's it is bigger it's probably the size it's probably the size of this book obviously it's thicker it might be a little bit bigger but it's not like a little usb interface which might be closer to the size of this thing um, where, you know, it, it's going to take up a little bit more room, but built in are two XLR inputs. There's two outputs there uh, for like monitors. If you have them with you, there's a headphone out, there's a fader on it, which is huge. I have a video going over all the features of the IO station 24 C. Um, but I think it's really cool. I think it's a very smart little thing. Plus, you know, it's like a fader port ends, a, uh, an audio box mashed together very smart very cool <clears throat> newbie from liverpool what's going on philip thanks for coming and hanging out especially uh very early <laughs> 
Are you up early or are you still up from last night? <laughs> uh, Raul, I've had a Slate Raven for over a year now and it basically sat there as a monitor for me. Now that I have switched to Studio One, I'm giving it another chance. Thoughts? Um, because the Slate Raven is built on like trying to use like macros and stuff, use the Studio One macros in conjunction or in replace of the Slate Raven thing um, macros. Um, this way you can really like kind of speed up your workflows and things like that. Um, aside from that, I haven't had a chance to sit on one. I know a buddy of mine had two of them, but he recently sold them because it didn't work in his workflow anymore. And he actually thought it was too slow for him. Um, your mileage may vary. So good luck with them. But utilize the, the macros, uh, especially for both the Raven and for Studio One. Um, some Nectar MIDI controllers have Studio One integration and will do it. Woo! Uh, it all depends on your keyboard controller and your ability to map S1 to your computer. That's something that Robert was saying. Maybe I missed it, but sorry. I'm too, I'm, I'm committed too far now. Bank changes. Oh, that's what you guys are talking about. <clears throat> uh, mixer scenes definitely changed at V5. Yep. Uh, we need more MIDI hardware maps from PreSonus or a user site for those. I'm sure there are. Um, or you can start one. Maybe that's a thing you could do. Robert Ganson, of course, do MIDI Learn and have the fader to operate that channel, but I would say I want to go to the next eight. I can't do it. At least haven't figured out how to. Yeah. Um, fortunately, that's like some MIDI mapping that you would need to do. Um, <clears throat> Believe me, get updated like the uh, lockout unlocking ability of the old system. I'll get used to the new one as prescribed. Pretty, pretty soonest. <laughs> uh, macro with a X8 repeat brute force your way through S1. <laughs> That's an option there, uh, there Robert. Uh, I've gone internal PCIe NVMA your drives and cloud backup works like a charm. Yeah, well, yeah, because of how fast they are. They're ridiculously fast. Um, thanks for hanging out, Brian. Have a great night. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll try it up and down. Maybe like, you know, the, the Konami code. That's what uh, Robert Axon is going to do. Up early, having MIDI struggles. I'm sorry to hear that, Philip. I'm glad you're here to hang out for uh, a little bit. Um, but I'm sorry that you're having some MIDI struggles. Unfortunately, I'm not the strongest with MIDI. I'm okay with it. I don't have things. We were saying this before. Main topic for Midnight Bar is whether we do it late night Friday or early year and call it something happy hour, more like folks can be there, uh, then open up the forum. That's definitely something to think about there. Music to motion. I've been talking to you guys for a while. I need a little water. The option is switching it to Saturday and making it like a happy hour. That's not a bad option. Um, while it's still small, I'm going to go back to the updates. I, I We've been chatting. I've been talking to you guys, which is amazing. I love talking to you guys. <clears throat> uh, I wonder if there's anything else that we really need to go over. There's some people who have just joined in. Um, basically, what we've gone over today so far uh, of the 5.2 upgrades that I think are the, some of the biggest ones are some of the mix enhancements. Um like being able to go in to a bunch of channels like this, creating your temporary group. And this is just kind of a recap for those who came in later. Um, I held down command and clicked while I was doing that <clears throat> to make a temporary group and be able to select what channels I wanted to do in. And now the pans are linked and I went up and down again. So I'm just going to go down and I have quickly pushed all of these to the left. And now I can go into the opposite ones, take all of these, push them to the right, instant stereo spreads huge huge stuff then another thing you can do which i think is a huge improvement is going into here and just instantly adding in a splitter the splitter you used to have to go to this little button down here the channel editor and then go to the routing page which was over here and then find a splitter and drag one in you don't have to do that anymore just undo, like a plugin, splitter, type it in, there you go. Now I can go in here and I can go to some something like the uh, red light. Oh, there's no space between red light. Maybe I want some distortion on this vocal. <clears throat> Total uh, standard split. 
and I have red light distortion on the one channel, and I can do my blend right here, or I can expand the splitter in the mixer view and adjust my blend right here. So any plugin, if it doesn't have a mix knob like this one does, you instantly can create your own mix by doing a normal split and it's parallel processing. It's huge. Huge. Um, does the compressor, it does have a mix knob built in. I was trying to find, I was trying to think of a, a stock plugin that doesn't have a mix knob on it. Um, and most of them do. Yeah, I can't really think of one that doesn't, at least off the top of my head. But stuff like this, splitter in the insert, so instantly telling you that there's a splitter going on, different icon showing off that it is in there. Great, 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 great. Parallel processing is still not native in your mind in Studio One. Well, the plugins all have it. Like Red Light Distortion, this has it built right in because of the mix knob. Now, I know where you're coming from. You're saying from Reason you could right-click and make Parallel Processing Channel, and it did some of the work for you. I think this is pretty close. Um, and with, you know, even outside of doing something like this where I can create a bus right in here, one click to make it solo isolate and then add in maybe some parallel compression quickly and easily. I mean, that was pretty quick. You saw me do that. I just plus add a bus. Let's do a flanger if I can spell right. There's a flanger solo isolate. Now there's two that are parallel processing. There are that is exactly what it is. I'm sending a copy to somewhere else to do some other kind of processing. Um, and even in, in these, whoop, this, this has a mix. So it has built-in parallel processing. This one has a mix, built-in parallel processing. A couple of undos, right back to normal. <clears throat> um, Philip says, oh, we'll get there thanks to people like yourself on YouTube. Well, Philip, thank you for the, the compliment. I appreciate that. The Witching Hour, kind of like that, but no. Eh, too bad. <laughs> and get down with some Billy Idol. Who can't? You don't talk to Billy Idol that way. Nobody talks to Billy Idol like that. <laughs> Mike and Ziggy's Happy Hour. Could be cool. Turn it into a podcast. Uh, I'll start zoom about five minutes ahead unless you want to start it either way. Just started doing parallel distortion. Game changer for sure. Yeah, you can do some really nice coloring with some parallel uh, distortion or some some parallel saturation to kind of... It doesn't have to be distortion because just, you know, uh, Robert, I'm sure you know this, but distortion and saturation, not entirely the same thing. Um, Brian just noticed right under ascend on the channel there was a little pan section there is this a new or did i miss it that did you miss it you you missed it it is really hard to see unless you're looking for it so let me just go in and i'm going to make a send here real quick and he's saying right there that tiny 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 little dot this and if i you know i'm going to click away i'm going to click and drag and now zoom in this is a teeny tiny little pan for your send. If you didn't know you could do that, now you do. So when you're sending to a bus or an effects channel, which they both default as stereo, if you have, so let's do this. <clears throat> let's say, watch this. Let's try something real quick. I'm gonna grab all of these holding shift, and make a temporary group. I'm going to add a bus. All of these are going to go, right? Let's grab our temporary group. And I wonder if I can do this. Oh! <clears throat> but something to help you make your vocal sound really wide is maybe you have this has a reverb on it. Let's just throw room reverb on because it doesn't matter. So now all of these vocals are going to feed this reverb, but 
they would just be feeding both the left and right channels. If you go in and you pan your sends, and even if you pan them opposite, whoop, if you pan them opposite, you do get a wider sound because what is the main vocal is panning to the left here. It is then coming out the right side of the reverb. So it pushes the thing, pu pushes those things out even further. This is going to be a feature request that I'm going to put in where this temporary group mix enhancements of the panning should also link the set, the pan sends. And I really wish, I think a lot of people overlook that the, this little panner, I think this needs to be a little bit more visible. I think it's hard for a lot of people to see. I do have a video showing this that has been out for a while, but I still think a lot of people overlook this and it is a huge thing to actually get some really nice width. <clears throat> uh, and another thing is some people are asking for the pans here to be linked to the send pans as an option, which I think would be very cool. <clears throat> See, even at the end of the show, and we are going to end the show pretty soon, at the end of the show, you guys are still learning stuff. See? Uh, maybe if I practice your method of parallel processing... <laughs> Uh, or we do a one-on-one -on -one to show me a couple ways you would do it. That would be cool. Music to motion, you got it, bud. Um, I'll, I'll, I can easily set up a lesson for you, and that's something that's available to anybody. If you are looking, I do offer one-on-one -on -one lessons. So if you want to learn stuff like this that are specific to your needs, you can reach out to me and we can set up lessons so that I can remote into your session, hear it through my system and make suggestions on your stuff or show you workflow um, enhancements one-on-one, -on -one, things to help you uh, achieve your mixes and your workflow things uh, better and faster. <clears throat> Someone just posted a picture of Billy Idol holding his granddaughter. I feel old now. And it was a, it was a great picture. I saw that one too. And I was like, oh, Billy Idol and his granddaughter. That's awesome. Uh, is that in V4, the panning the sends? Yeah, it's been around for a little while. Oh, wow, I didn't expect that. Yen! There you go, man. <laughs> uh, uh, I never saw that, that pan, the, the, the send pan before. Never stopped learning something new. That's for you, bud. As for everybody else, Ironweeds have been looking for the send pan. It's it's in there. It's hard to see, but it does exist. I found that back in version three. It's been around for a very long time, but it's it's hard to see. Um, <clears throat> Robert Atkins, you're not stupid. You just learned something new. That's all it was. This is great. I had no dang clue that was there. See, everybody's learning. This is great for guitar where you can have reverb on the one side. Exactly. If your guitar is panned all the way to the left, you can take the reverb and the delay and have that send out on the right. Super chat from Music to Motion for $5 just because you showed a hidden feature. Thank you so much, bud. Early Van Halen hard pan sitting. Check. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like early Van Halen was LCR panning, left, center, right. If it wasn't one of those, it didn't exist. There's, no, there's nothing in between. It's either left, center, or right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like Pro Tools has a uh, pan follows. It's an option, yes. Yen, you really do a good job on the Studio One detail. Thank you, Yen. And Raul sending a $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Wonderful episode and lesson. I'm uh, going to have to head over to jump and zoom like 10 minutes. And he once again put the link to uh, the Midnight Bar uh, or the Midnight, yeah, the Midnight Bar. I can't even remember the name anymore. I'm sorry. Um, that's a, a link in the description uh, for his thing. Also, if you're curious, I just dropped into the chat a link for the Discord. If you guys are looking for collaborations, if you're looking for feedback, if you're looking for, um, if you're just looking to help grow the community uh, and be a part of it, Join the Discord um, where we're all there to help each other out. Um, and it's a really cool place where, you know, <clears throat> it's still growing and I need your help to continue to grow it. Um, so go ahead and join the Discord. Thank you all for coming and hanging out. There's a ton of great features <clears throat> that have been added to Studio One version 5.2. And there's go there's going to be so much more added to subsequent updates as well uh and even the big updates is uh you know when they're working on those too version six eventually will come out who knows when i definitely don't um but all these uh <laughs> robert's gonna bring the fireball whiskey 
12 o'clock, the midnight bar. That's what it is. Uh, it's a Zoom. Yes, Matthew, you can just use the link that Music to Motion dropped um, a couple lines above uh, to join his Zoom and just be ready for it at midnight, which is uh, in 15 minutes. So they're really, they're going to start in like 15 minutes. So if you're available to, you can go hang out with those guys and, you know, um, just, just talk shop with with those guys. Uh, uh, have you got some rum too for Robert? Okay, that's where we're gonna say good night, everybody. I, again, I appreciate you all coming and hanging out while we talked about all all kinds of stuff, um, updates and new features. Going through, I forgot Billy's thing. Okay, real quick, real quick, real quick. Let's go back in. Uh. Gonna open up the browser. Let's find uh, Loops. He was asking about MIDI and Loops. MIDI and Loops. I don't even know if Billy's still here. <laughs> yeah, and good night. Thanks for coming and hanging out. You can do a video or audio or just listen in. Yeah, you can just hang. Um, he's talking about uh, Loops. Because he's talking stuff like this where it says dot audio loop. Um, so that is like one of the, the stock things from PreSonus, but a MIDI, um, I think is going to be in here. Here's like the waves. I think you just have to look. I waited until the absolute end. I'm just remembering. I am so sorry, Billy. <laughs> how to get, how to get to Zoom. Uh, and Enmon, you can follow the link that Music to Motion had dropped in. Uh, which is this one. I'm going to see if I can copy it. Uh, no, I can't copy it. Um, he, he dropped the link above my Discord link, so you can join it there, Usually, either through a browser, I believe you can do, or you can do it through, um, it's an app that you can download, and it's free to download, free to sign up. You, you know, you're not really giving them any information. Um, I'm going to get ready for next week, Billy, which I don't even know if Billy's still here. Um, there's the, another link, uh, for the, the midnight bar. Um, that's not the one I wanted to hit. I wanted to hit that one. All right. It's cause I'm, uh, that's how I'm going to start the show next week. If Billy shows up again next week, I'm going to show him MIDI and audio. Cause I think I need to do a little bit more research myself on it. I'm sorry, Billy. Otherwise, Thank you all so much for coming and hanging out. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for all the super chats that you sent today. I'm glad that you were able to learn stuff and you donated. That really helps me uh, continue to do these live streams and continue to make these uh, the videos for you and for everyone that's out there. Um, <clears throat> thank you for being a subscriber if you uh, are a subscriber. If not, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you have liked the video, thank you for liking the video. Uh, hit the notification bell. Join the Discord check out the videos and I will catch you guys next week. Every week on Friday, we do a 10 o'clock live stream going over uh, all, all kinds of stuff. I'm always open to suggestions. That's another reason to join the discord is you can suggest things for videos to me directly through there. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. I will talk to you guys next week and enjoy yourselves. Bye.